It's literally eight. Stressing, stressing. We'll get our bag, my jewelry. The videos are coming, just be patient with me. I found him on TikTok. His girlfriend at the time went viral. The guy of my dreams. Like, like you gotta fall before you get up. Will you be linking up with other YouTubers in London? It's big, diverse, and fast-paced. Stay abroad or go back to Malaysia. And honestly, looking for a job in the creative industry. If you guys wanna hire me, I'm literally shitting myself. I still be downtown whipping on the way to you. Something that belongs to me. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Your girl just got invited to a first ever influencer event and I'm going with White Fox. When White Fox kindly sent me their invite, I was like, oh my goodness, you already know I'm gonna be there. Lights are on, that means get ready with me for my first ever influencer event. My skin is honestly so freaking dry. Like, it's ashy. It's so bad. By the way guys, can I just say what summer are we looking at? The UK is honestly so embarrassing right now because it's mid-July and I still have to wear a hoodie out. It was like sunny for like one week in May. And then we're back to this. Anyways, I told you guys to ask me a few questions in the comments as well whilst I get ready. Just gonna keep things a little more interesting and also just to update you guys on like where I've been for the past few weeks because let me just say, I've been doing so many things right now. I record all these things, I just, I, the life is just happening. I just have no time to edit. But I promise you guys, like, the videos are coming. Just be patient with me. And don't worry, I have been vlogging a lot. I have so much footage from, like, my Porto trip, from my girls trip in Nice, to, like, the moving in, the moving out diaries, my room transformations. Like, I have so much content. I just need to find the time to honestly edit everything. Even like contemplating on getting a editor at one point, but I do not have the funds for that right now. But one thing about me is that I'm really like DIY. You will rarely catch me hiring someone else to do something I can do, which is also such a toxic trait because in most cases, I actually do need assistance. I literally think I'm invincible sometimes, which is such a bad mentality because girl or not. So the first question is, how did my boyfriend and I meet? I have so many questions asking this and I find that so cute. Honestly, you can call him right now. So, I just called him but he's a bit camera shy. I had a few questions asking whether I should make more videos with him. I do. He's just camera shy. So, yeah. <laughs> you are! Quick, come say hi. Look at this. Please make a vlog with your boyfriend. Wow! Excuse me, it doesn't look cute in the background. <laughs> I DM'd her on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, enjoy. Thank you. Hello. I'll open it please, thank you. So the answer is he DM'd me on Instagram. Let me add some layers to the story. So basically, I found him on TikTok because I think one of the videos he did with his girlfriend at the time went viral. And I remember I was sending that video to my friends and I was like, Oh my god, this man is so cute. I was like, this is literally the guy of my dreams. Like, if I had a type, this would be him. I found out he was taken and I was like, oh my god, so sad, but whatever, it's fine, you know? And then like, literally four months later, he DMs me on Instagram because his girlfriend and him broke up. Talk about manifestation, ladies. I scheduled a coffee date. I left him in my requests for quite a time because I wanted to make sure he was single before I like, obviously replied and stuff. You know, we had a FaceTime call and we got on really well. So we went drinking two days in a row before the coffee date that was scheduled on Sunday. I literally find that story so interesting. It's like, what were the odds, you know? Here we are now, flash forward four years. A lot of you guys have been asking for long distance tips as well. Dee and I did long distance for the longest time. We basically did a one year long distance when he was in Malaysia and I was in Bristol. And then we did another two years of long distance when he was studying in Edinburgh. The number one advice I can kind of give is that you both kind of have to want it. Long distance does not work out if it's like a one way street. The reason why most long distance relationships don't work out is because one person is not as into the relationship as the other person and that's gonna be very hard. Both of us wanted each other as much as each other did. So both of us definitely put in the energy, time and effort into the relationship. One advice I can give is to honestly set a routine. One thing that worked for me is that I made an effort to call every single day. I think just dedicating that one hour of time to each other every single day is going to make the difference. One thing we did as well was like sleep calling. The time zone difference in Malaysia is like 
a hit. He would purposefully stay up past midnight just to talk to me and I would leave uni early just to talk to him. So I will make sure I'll be home around like 4 or 5 which would be like 12 a.m. for him. And he would stay up until 3 a.m. like almost every single day at one point just to talk to me. Just so he could accompany me eating dinner and all of that. So I feel like we both sacrificed a lot just to make the relationship work. He sacrificed his sleep and I sacrificed, I guess, spending time outside in a way. Like, I don't make it sound like I was sacrificing my whole entire uni experience because trust me, I had an amazing uni experience. My point is just that if you want a relationship to work, you kind of have to expect to give up a few things. And honestly, it's up to you whether you're okay with giving up a few things or finding a way around it. Another rule I would say is not go to sleep mad. I think that, especially with time zone difference, I really do suggest like fixing problems before one person falls asleep and do not end that call with one person not okay with something. That was one rule we kind of established with each other. Like we'll never hang up on each other, never just go to sleep angry. We'll always try to resolve something before one of us goes to sleep. I think setting a few rules and boundaries are really good as well because it helps with like communication. Like sitting down and truly just planning how you're gonna make things work. I feel like that's really nice because it kind of feels like a contract and you can just kind of talk about what you guys want just out in the open. There's already a physical distance between you guys. There's no point adding more distance by not communicating, you know? It's not impossible. I know a lot of people always talk about oh long distance, this, long distance, that, but personally I think it takes two to make it work and it's definitely not impossible. Like we did it for three years and I do not regret it. It gave me my own time to really grow as an individual. He grew separately, I grew separately, but we were also like growing together, that makes sense. I don't regret it at all. I'm really happy with our relationship and how things ended up the way it did. I think one helpful advice as well is to start a series together. And when I eat dinner, we would watch something. I think that was really nice as well. It was a nice like little bonding time for both of us. So yeah, starting a series together. If you guys don't know, I just moved to London, literally. I got a lot of questions asking how the move has been and how I'm finding London so far, any tips and tricks, and just kind of like the difference between Bristol and now. And honestly, I would have to say that London is not for the week. <laughs> I would say moving from like a uni town to the big city has been such a big change and if I'm being completely honest with you, like I'm still adjusting to it. I'm not comfortable enough to call this my home yet just because it's only been around two weeks and I think it's gonna take me a lot longer to really just adjust to the city. But I'm just taking it day by day to really slowly adapt myself to like kind of like the way of life here and all of that. One thing I really find myself missing about Bristol is just safety and community. Like London is one of the most isolating cities and no one really talks about it. I was so aware of that moving into the city, having living through it. The city is just so big and so fast paced that it's like, even living with my boyfriend, I do long for like the slower, more community feel of Bristol being a uni town. That was one thing I found really hard to kind of like adjust and shift. Coming from such a community based city to like London, which is honestly so individualistic, so isolating. Everyone's literally here to chase their dreams and chase their careers that it's just so go 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 all the time. It's been only two weeks and the first few days here like already so drained and so like overwhelmed. Like I literally broke down my bed because I was like, I miss Bristol so much because things just seem so simple. It's what it is. I feel like that's just a part of like growing up and adulting, you know, like I found it really hard to adjust for the first few days. And I describe myself as a like city city girl. I was literally born in the city. Like I love the fast pacedness and someone who's quite extroverted. I found it really hard to adjust. I'm just going through a mindset of just letting go and letting things happen and just letting the journey do its thing, you know? What's the point of enjoying all the glories of the end result if you don't suffer for a bit, especially during the beginning of your journey? Does it make sense? I don't know. I'm just yapping out of my ass right now. I've got a lot of questions asking how London is like and honestly to describe it, very simply, in three big words, I would say it's big, diverse, and fast-paced. Don't expect the comforts of safety if you're used to that. And everyone's here for literally one reason, and that is to chase their dreams and their career goals. So I just wanted to quickly come in here and kind of expand a little bit more on the living situation and how I've been ever since moving from Bristol. I've been super busy ever since I submitted my dissertation. Like, I was constantly traveling. I even went back home to Malaysia for my brother's wedding. It's just been a lot. Like, June and July has been busy and eventful. 
eventful month for me, but that also meant that I felt like I was living life through autopilot. Key events such as moving in, moving out, my birthday, my graduation, it just felt like events that it's crazy to think that all these things happen. Living life on autopilot and feeling constantly drained can be incredibly challenging, especially when you're going through crazy life changes. It sounds like these where having someone to talk to can make a world of a difference. That is where BetterHelp, the sponsor of this video, comes in. BetterHelp connects you with licensed therapists who are trained to listen and give you unbiased advice. It's super simple. All you need to do is go to your website, answer a few questions, and BetterHelp will match you with a professional that has years of experience helping people with struggles like yours. You can do it from your phone, your laptop, via phone call, video chat or messaging, whichever option you feel the most comfortable in. I personally think it's the easiest way to start talking to a therapist. So if this sounds like something you guys are interested in, you can visit BetterHelp using the link in my bio or choose LNSC when you sign up. This will give you guys a special discount for your first month. I think with a lot of us graduating and going through these major changes in our lives, I think it's really important for us to know when to reach out for help when we need it. If you guys have any more questions about BetterHelp, you can visit the link in my bio as well. Thank you so much BetterHelp for being the partner of this video and let's get on with the rest of my get ready. This is kind of leading to like the next question but it's kind of like what am I doing here? What are my next plans? Where am I gonna be? What am I doing now after graduation? And that's just kind of like what are my plans in London? And honestly, looking for a job. I am looking for a job in the creative industry. And yes, I am on the graduate visa or I'm going to apply for my graduate visa. I just got my graduation certificate literally two days ago. If you guys don't really know, the graduate visa is basically a visa that's available to people who have completed a course here. And you can only apply for it once. It's basically a two-year visa which lets you stay in the UK whilst you search for a permanent job. But once that two years is up and you still do not have a job, you have to go home. A lot of my friends from uni and stuff, they decided to go home to Malaysia or Singapore just because they thought it wasn't worth it and because the job market is absolute shit right now which it is and honestly I thought long and hard on whether I wanted to stay here and stuff and I realized that for what I want to do for my career path and also for social media the best way is honestly stay here for at least two years to really give it my all so a lot of you guys have been also asking what jobs I plan to apply for and I plan to honestly apply for any business related job in the creative industry that is PR, marketing or like even like creative assistant or like project management as long as it's in the creative industry the creative or fashion industry I would say so I've been applying to a lot of luxury houses like Cartier, Louis Vuitton, all their internship positions and other industries such as was it DreamWorks? I can't remember, was it Disney? something like that like DreamWorks or like Disney Warner, Warner, Warner Partners Warner Brothers Oh my god, I literally cannot speak. I went to the Travis Scott concert last night and I'm not okay. I'm still recovering and I have an event to go to literally in two hours. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm gonna assume it's gonna be fun. A lot of drinks, a lot of people. Really nervous to meet new people, but you know what? It's what it is. But yeah, I've just been applying to those. Like honestly, anything business related, I can do it. Everything I've applied for so far, I've been rejected from. So if you guys want to hire me, Please hire me. Literally hire me. I will do anything for you. I will do anything business related except accounting because I did not study that. But literally anything, 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 please. I will, I will do it. I will do it for you. Just give me a job. For real. I believe my skills is valuable to you. I believe my skills will help your business a lot. Um, so yeah. I also been applying to Condé Nast, like British Vogue, GQ, magazine houses, all of that. Any available positions they have, I've been applying to, but I've been rejected from all. The market is just so competitive, so... Yeah, if you guys want to hire me, please do. Let me achieve my dreams. But obviously besides that, like what I plan to do here is also apply for like petite modeling agencies, pursue and obviously grow my social media and kind of like deep into that a lot more because I kind of missed out on a lot of opportunities being based in Bristol because a lot of events were happening in London and I could not go for them because I was based in Bristol and obviously I had uni but now that I'm literally like unemployed I have so much time and creative freedom to really explore and really kind of just take my content to another level because I'll have more time to like dedicate to it Year 3 was honestly so taxing on me but your girl did it and graduated with a first class so 
yeah. So I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the reason why I decided to take the graduate visa in the UK as well. If you guys don't know, I studied international business management and I wanted to get into consulting. So in year two, before like my YouTube started popping up, that was literally the goal, like to get a consulting job in the UK or wherever. And I tried so hard and stuff. I even got an internship at PwC in Bristol, but I didn't take it. They like announced it to me like, like a month before and I already had so many summer plans. So I didn't take it. Um, just because I thought I was gonna get rejected. They told me I got accepted like literally a month before it started. So that was sad, but at the time as well, like, I just kind of knew like that wasn't the career path I wanted to go down on. Like I kind of wanted to pursue something more creative. Since now, I feel like I have a platform to kind of do so and I realized that the corporate life is just not for me, you know? Like I did my summer internship at a bank last year and even, even though I did it under like regional branding, marketing field or team, I still did not learn much. Maybe it was the industry I was in, like honestly investment banking, like what do we need to market on, you know? But um, it was the only opportunity available for me. I did an internship at Maybank Investment Group, if you guys are wondering. The 9 to 5 desk job was just not for me. I feel like me right now, like I'm meant for so much more and is not being tied down glued to my desk. I had a few questions asking whether I would like to stay abroad or go back to Malaysia. And honestly, in the long haul, I definitely plan to settle down and get married and have kids in Malaysia. I love KL so much. Like just because I'm choosing to stay here for two more years, home is always going to be there. And that's kind of like my mindset. I'm literally 22 living in a big city once in my life you know we're all given this opportunity once in our lives this visa as well like available to everyone is available for people who did complete their degree here you know and I just kind of deeped it one day and I was like you know what I think I'm gonna take the leap of faith and do what I can in this city and if it doesn't work out Worst case scenario, I go home and that's not even such a bad case. Like I love home so much that I will be more than happy to go home, you know? I'm trying not to set that much expectations on myself and where I'll be in the next, I don't know, six months. And that is so interesting because I'm literally such a planner. I plan out every single aspect of my life and the things I'm going to do to achieve my goals. And this is the first time in my life where I literally have no idea. Like I literally can't even tell you where I'll be in the next six months. And I used to freak out about it, but now I'm just living through the mindset of letting go and letting things happen and letting the universe just do what they can for me. Things may seem a little rocky and rainy now, but it doesn't mean that better days are coming. Like you gotta fall before you get up, you know? So that's kind of like the mentality and mindset I'm living through right now. The creative industry in Malaysia is honestly shit. Like a lot of times people are undervalued and underpaid in the industry in Asia. I feel like it's gonna take some time for that value to kind of increase and yeah that is the only reason why i don't think i can make a living off the creative industry back home in malaysia or in asia in general just because i feel like demand is just not there yet being in london i feel like the city is just so vibrant and so big there's so many opportunities for the creative space as well if i need to go back to my 9 to 5 i will go back to me 9 to 5 jobs are like the same everywhere like a 9 to 5 job in london is the same as a 9 to 5 job in malaysia you go through the same every single day it's just that in Malaysia I'm able to save more because the tax isn't so freaking high. <laughs> I think throughout the night, my eyelashes are gonna fall anyway. It's fine if they're like a little dramatic now. Will you be linking up with other YouTubers in London? Hence the event I'll literally be going to later on. Oh my god. I am so nervous for this event, by the way, guys. Like, I think I'm gonna need to have a glass of wine before I go or something. To answer the question, I would love to, but I don't personally know anyone right now. But to be short and sweet, yes, I would love to. And we'll see, you know, maybe I'll meet a few people tonight. And if we get along really well, then I don't see why not city is already so isolating that it's kind of like what's the harm in meeting more people i'm honestly quite excited to be attending more like influencer events and stuff that i kind of missed out on just because i was based in bristol i'd love to meet more creators in the city and obviously meet more people in the same industry as me because i'm not really friends or close with many creators like in general i don't know a lot of my friends like don't do content honestly i'm quite nervous for my event later on because i have no idea what to expect white fox is a brand that i feel like caters to a certain body 
demographic to a certain audience and I feel like I'm not like the spitting image of that audience I'm definitely nervous like I'm definitely gonna drink before I go because oh my god god forbid I go there sober I don't know like I can seem all like extrovert and stuff in front of the camera but when it comes to real life like, I do get a little bit nervous purely due to difference in culture and background the event's gonna be in the UK so obviously most of the people going are like from England but um, I am not and the culture is really different so I'm a bit nervous but you know what like everyone's gonna look cute and I think it's gonna be great event and if it's not I'll let you guys know the one thing I look forward to like living here is that the creative industry is so diverse and I love just getting to know people from different backgrounds that was one thing I was struggling a little bit with in Bristol because it's kind of hard to like mix with people if you're like the only one that doesn't understand the culture you know what I mean but it's like if you're mixing with people that come from different cultures anyway they're more open to obviously get to know you and more likely to kind of like get along most of my friends from Bristol are international students anyway so I am honestly starting to overthink my eyelash situation. I feel like it is too big for my face. Okay. Oh, so pretty. I'm gonna put more fake ones down here, mm. and then I'm gonna put like contacts. Mm. We'll pause the break. Watching the new episode of The Book. I just got this watch from Vinted. Isn't it like the cutest thing ever? I am so nervous. So basically the event starts at 8 and it's literally like... It's literally 8. Stress in, stress in. I've been waiting for a reply for the Uber codes but no reply. So literally might just have to Uber there by myself. Oh my god, we are literally... Putting on my nails on right now, this is kind of crazy. So my friend told me if you put rubbing alcohol on your nails and you rub it off, then it sticks on better. Because last time, it just didn't work at all. God, so So this is the rings. I'm mixing gold. I don't know whether, like, maybe not. Maybe it's too much. We'll figure it out. So this is basically the jewelry. Rings. Bangles. Alright, this is the vibe, this is the fit. The ring is literally gonna fall off, so I'm not gonna put it on. Okay, so I'm literally stressing, but this top's from White Fox, and then these jeans are from Urban. I have my blue glare bag, my jewelry, hair fit. I am literally shitting myself, I'm so nervous, I'm late. But yeah, I'll catch you guys at the event. Hey baby girls! Okay, so this is gonna be the full rundown of my first ever influencer event. Can I just say thank you so much White Fox for having me, but oh my goodness, this is the most dystopian shit you'll ever go to. I feel like there are two types of people at this event. There were micro-influencers and proper like celebrity level influencers. A lot of ex-love islanders there. So I turn to my right, I see Chuck Bass. I turn to my left, I see Jack Fowler literally DJing and I'm like, oh my god, what am I doing here? It was gorgeous. I mean, had a little bit of imposter syndrome at this event, but nonetheless, I still had an amazing time. Overall, I don't know whether influencer events are for me or not. It was just kind of funny seeing people with their ring lights kind of filming themselves having fun instead of actually being in the moment. Thank God it was a free flow of alcohol because I kind of needed that. It was such a big deal for me just because a like, white fox template is definitely tall, blonde, white, big tits, big butt. And for me, I'm very opposite of that. So I feel like this event definitely challenged me a little bit just because I was kind of sad to say, but it felt like I wasn't meant to be there. That is a mindset I'm trying to break out of because obviously I meant to be there if I did get an invite. But it was so nice meeting all these YouTubers and TikTokers that I would kind of see their content and it was just nice coming up to them and saying hi and everything. There were a few celebrity level influencers that I was a bit shy to say hi to but I tried my best to kind of talk to as many people as I could. But yeah, the liquid courage has definitely pumped me through her veins. I was with my friend Abby the entire night and I'm so happy we stuck together. We were both so drunk by the end of the event. I remember the whole time we just kept saying I'm afraid. Influencer event 
events are seriously just like not real like in a room full of people who kind of think they're the shit just kind of hang out with their own influencer friends and no one's kind of like open to get to know you except the micro influencers so that was kind of like the group I was with and honestly they were so fun like I was with a bunch of the like uni uh, influencers and that was really nice because honestly it just felt like I was with a bunch of friends that were my age but yeah it was such an interesting mix of people but yes white fox if you're watching this video please invite me again it was such a fun experience and I had an amazing time. Oh.